you please, please, what, what are you doing? You are annoying me. Yes, you are. You are annoying. Yes, you are. Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. Today I have a bit of a sad video uh, to talk about and uh, before we do a deep dive into the truth of Marshall Farms and where these guys come from, just know that I have been planning on making this video for over a year now and I've been working on it for over a year now. It's just incredibly difficult finding information on this place. You have no idea. This place is very top secret, very <laughs> closed off from the public, so it's very hard to get accurate information of what's going on inside the actual facility. Okay, I guess this is this is happening right now. So just know that I worked really hard on this video and although it might not seem like much by the end of it because we don't have a lot of information on this place, just know that I dug deep for some of this information and so I really hope that you listen to the whole video all the way through, especially if you're one of those people who are still very adamant about buying ferrets from pet stores and that it's okay and don't have an issue with it. I highly recommend that you watch the video all the way through. So please do hear me out. If not for me, do it for the thousands of ferrets and other animals that die at the hands of animal testing every year. So some of the history on this place, Marshall Bioresources provides animals in various areas around the globe, so not just in the United States. They have been in business for 75 years now. They state their animals have contributed to the development of life-saving therapies and treatments for humans and animals alike. They also hold themselves to the highest standards of quality and care for their animals, claiming they have a large commitment to animal care and well Welfare. Gilman Marshall, the creator of Marshall Farms, began by raising ferrets as a hobby and then started supplying them for the development of canine distemper vaccines. Eventually, it became more common to use dogs in addition to rodents in the development of new drugs. In 1962, they created a colony of beagles to be used for research and testing purposes. The Marshall Beagle is now well recognized worldwide. They are currently the largest ferret breeder in the entire United States. I would say that 90, more than 90% of our ferrets here in the United States come from Marshall Farms. They come from this facility. According to the Marshall Mill Wiki, they sell ferrets to pet shops in Canada and Japan as well. Marshall Mill ferrets usually have those two small blue dots tattooed in their right ear. They have since added many species to their mill, including mini pigs and cats, and have created a new brand called Marshall Pet Products, something that you might have seen in your local pet store. They provide food and toys for both ferrets, rabbits, and I think some other animals as well. Marshall Mill is most known by the general public for providing those cute, adorable ferrets that you see in the pet stores, those little babies. The average customer, sadly, will not be told the truth of where these ferrets come from. Instead, they're redirected to the fake Marshall website, what I, which is what I like to call it, called MarshallFerrets.com. And this website makes everything look okay. You got the cute and cuddly ferrets. They have this registry service where you can get a fake certificate for your ferret, a fake birth certificate that has absolutely no merit in the real world. They also have a directory of all of their products and toys that they sell. On their real website called Marshall Bio, which is probably not something that you've come across yet in your ferret researching journey, it's not the first thing that comes up when you're searching Marshall ferrets, and there's a reason for that. Laboratories that test on animals don't make great marketing, especially for families looking for a family pet. They're not gonna wanna see the laboratory that they're bred and raised in. On their real website, they discuss which species of animals they breed, and their quality assurance that they have for them. All animals are cared for and managed properly, or so they say. They also sell tissues, blood, plasma, serum, all from the animals that they mass produce. According to a Marshall representative, this is very horrifying, we will breed anything a laboratory wants. If they want a dog with three legs or an abnormally large heart, we can do it. Wow, nice job, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Like, this is disgusting. This is nothing to boast about, especially not to the public. If you're buying products from Marshalls, and this means their food, their litter, their treats, their toys, anything marketed by Marshalls, you are directly supporting the animal mill industry. That is just the fact of the matter. That is not my opinion. That is the truth. And some retailers like Overstock.com, when learning about this, when learning about the truth of Marshall pet products, they stopped selling their products completely, which is awesome. Let's begin by looking at some of their animal 
animal welfare act violations that they have so in 2005 marshall farms was reported to have unsanitary animal conditions they had cages full of dog hair urine the buildings housing animals were potent in ammonia due to filthy conditions the ur there were urine stains and fecal buildup under the rabbit cages and more in 2006 there were multiple reports of inadequate veterinary care and daily health monitoring a dead puppy was found in a refrigerator that contained drugs and there were a multitude of other dogs with worsening health conditions and injuries that were kept in cages and they did not receive medical attention many were found with blood in their cages and around the cages the usda inspector also noted a puppy barely conscious and shaking along with another dehydrated puppy who sadly had to be euthanized because of the poor conditions that they were kept in they also found dogs kept in dark damaged and dirty cages which is of course a health risk there were also dead and decomposing wild mice found in many of the buildings which is disgusting just goes to show how filthy these conditions are for these animals now this part really really bothers me i mean the entire thing does but this next part is just really horrifying and tragic to me a month later the inspector found that puppies were being euthanized they were being killed murdered and autopsied so they were performing surgery after killing these puppies in front of their siblings in front of other dogs they were being forced to watch their siblings being killed taken apart in front of their very eyes which is very traumatic very emotionally and physically distressing for a dog you may not think that they understand what's going on but they really do that is a fact they know what's happening you know they hear the puppy in distress they can see it happening they know what's going on on top of this there was fly infestations in all the buildings too which is this place is disgusting clearly it doesn't stop there in 2007 three young dogs were found covered in blood in their cages after they received a nail trim Three more dogs were found with their cages left open, like the cage doors were just left open, and ferrets were found running loose all over the property, inside and outside of the buildings, which is very concerning. In 2012, there were underweight dogs recorded with prominent pelvic bones and visible ribs. Also in 2012, at the Marshall facility in China, they were caught lying to authorities saying that the 70 puppies that they shipped out to India were going to be living the rest of their lives as house pets as happy house pets with families when in reality they were shipped to a, another laboratory and they never saw the outside world again again in 2012 the marshall facility in italy was shut down after dog abuse allegations resulting in the arrest of three management members who were found guilty of unjustified killing and mistreatment of dogs marshall's was also blocked from opening a new branch in the uk following many protests from various animal rights groups marshall farms was still still allowed to continue operations after all of those things happen, selling roughly 450,000 animals between 2005 and 2007. Oddly, they seem to have dropped off the face of the earth after those, all those violations. I'm assuming they did something to help erase their name from the media, I'm assuming that's what happened, because there's no possible, there's no physical way that you could house thousands of animals in a small area properly it's just it's physically impossible so i do believe that there are still violations occurring at this place i mean there's no way that there isn't we can also confirm that ferrets and other animals are being kept in wire floored cages they obviously don't get any outside of cage enrichment time they don't get any enrichment at all and they are fed an improper diet we know all of this it is all confirmed so just by that alone they're not treating their animals properly so let's go down into the very sad details of what actually goes on in this facility and other facilities like it animals of all species undergo horrifying tests these tests include excruciatingly painful procedures being intentionally injured implanted with medical devices force-fed toxic substances and infected with disease some tests require the animal be killed and their tissues harvested afterwards i think some people have it in their heads that some animals receive some tests and then they're just returned to their living space and that's it gets repeated the next day the animal lives that's fine but that's not the case it almost always ends in torture and death for every animal involved in a lab even if it might be like that for some of the animals maybe they don't die immediately but it will end that way they will never see the outside world and that's their reality marshall boasts ferrets all year round but what this means is ferrets are forced to breed all year round 
If you weren't aware, naturally the polecat in the wild, which is the ferret's direct ancestor, they would naturally only have one litter each year in the spring. Nothing more than that. And these ferrets are being forced to breed all throughout the year for who knows how many times. Now I'm unsure how they impregnate the females there, if they use artificial insemination or they do it naturally, but if they do it naturally, breeding is a very, very intense process for both the ferrets involved. And then to add to that, after they give birth to their litter, they see them for only a short few weeks until they're ripped from their moms, mutilated, spayed and neutered, and then shipped out to the store. It's, it's a very emotionally taxing process for the mother ferret who only gets to see her ferrets for a few weeks and then they're gone. Ferrets bred for pet lines are also not carefully selected. If they were, we wouldn't have such an issue with genetic diseases and disorders, heart conditions. We wouldn't have so much deafness in ferrets here. Proper breeders would not breed animals with these problems because they don't want them to spread it down into their litter. That's what proper breeders do. They don't, they want to promote and provide healthy ferrets for people, healthy animals. And Marshalls is not one of those people. They don't care. Clearly they don't care or else we wouldn't have such an issue. Issue. And this is why ferrets in the pet stores, nine times out of ten, are riddled in disease, ear mites, respiratory infections, parasites. These are not normal for healthy ferrets to have. Ferrets that are bred properly shouldn't have these types of issues. Let me go back to the pet line for a second. So Marshalls has two lines of ferrets that they breed. One for pet stores and then the genetically superior ones are bred for testing to sell to other labs. They're used for research. So by not going to the pet store and not buying that ferret, sadly, you're not going to affect their laboratory lines, but you will affect their pet lines. This guy really just wants to be in this video. He's just making a fuss. You're making a fuss. Anyways, by not giving them that demand, they won't keep supplying it. It's a simple supply and demand. The pet lines will diminish and less ferrets will be forcibly bred with inherited diseases and kept in filthy conditions. They also won't have to experience the trauma of being separated by their moms and their siblings at such a young age. Again, simple supply and demand. If no one's buying your product, why keep selling it? It doesn't make any sense at a business standpoint. Unfortunately, that's a concept that's very difficult for many people to grasp. And I understand how hard it can be to go to the pet store see these baby ferrets that need homes and not buy them i understand i have been there myself but the reality is when you buy that ferret it just opens up another spot for another ferret to take its place a week later maybe even a couple days later the cycle continues and for some reason i've had people come to me and say that well, I mean, what does PECO do to the ferrets that don't get sold? Do they kill them? I've gotten this on many, many occasions. People think that employees are killing their animals that they don't sell, which is just an awful allegation. And I'm sure pet store employees all over the world would be very upset to learn that people think that they actually kill their animals, which by the way, is considered animal abuse and is illegal. That would not be allowed to happen. So don't worry, those ferrets that you see in the pet store will be sold eventually. There are always people that don't heed my words or that don't watch my channel. There are many people that don't. Those ferrets will find a home eventually. And if it takes them a long time, which is the point, the store will most likely think about it next time. Hmm maybe I shouldn't order so many ferrets, or maybe I shouldn't order them at all if it takes them this long to sell. People, pet stores don't want their animals in the stores for very long, they don't. And this method of not buying ferrets has worked. Places like PetSmart have stopped selling ferrets. They still do sell Marshall pet products, so I wouldn't support them anyways. Also many small chains and local pet stores have stopped selling ferrets because either there was a low demand or and or people were bringing them back and saying i can't handle this all the impulse buyers because they're such a high maintenance pet it's not exactly a great animal to sell in a store please if you're against buying puppies from puppy mills which i would assume most of you are so if you're against that naturally you should be against ferrets being sold in stores because it's the exact same thing it's exactly the same thing and dogs are also tested on and researched on and so are ferrets it's the same thing so what makes ferrets so different than puppies are they lesser than puppies they're not the vast majority of animals bred for research and testing never leave the laboratory alive the father and mother ferrets will never see the outside world never feel the warmth of a family never knowing love they won't get to raise their babies they won't be able to snuggle up with their friends or nest in a warm blanket this is their reality for their entire life 
end the cycle, stop supporting Marshall Farms and places that sell their products. Now, how can we help? The number one thing that we can help in the plight against animal mills is, again, not buying the ferrets at the pet stores and not buying the products. It's as simple as that, a very, very easy way to make a difference. Not that the Marshall products are high quality or worth your money anyways. I just posted a video, top 20 ferret products to avoid. Pretty much all of them are Marshall products. Don't waste your money on them. They're low quality. They're harmful for your ferret, not healthy not worth your money. The next biggest thing you can do is help spread awareness. You don't have to make YouTube videos or make big posts, but sharing it with the people in your life that may not know about this. I mean, even people who aren't interested in ferrets at all, at least they will have that knowledge. And then maybe if someone else in their life talks about wanting ferrets, they'll remember, oh, my friend really said that it's, you know, not great for you to support pet store ferrets. So maybe you shouldn't do that. Maybe you should look into it. The more people are educated on the subject, the better, because honestly, this topic is something that I didn't even know about in my research before I got my ferret. I didn't know about Marshall Farms at all. Number three, talk to your local pet stores that sell Marshall ferrets or Marshall products. They most likely will be receptive to your advice. I recommend printing out notes, printing out the violations that Marshalls has had against them, all of this information, put it into a binder and show your local pet store owner, manager. If they truly love animals, they will hear you out. And four, keep an eye out for state legislation with animal mills. Currently, New York State is trying to abolish pet store puppies, kittens, and bunnies. So they're trying to stop that from happening, stop them from being sold in pet stores unless they're from rescues, which is great. If something like that is happening in your state or in your area, get involved. I also wanted to add because there's this really weird idea going around on my channel that I'm trying to say you shouldn't own a Marshall Ferret and that's just not true. I've never once said that. Of course, again, over 90% of our ferrets are from Marshall Farms. There's no way around it. The ferrets from the shelter that you get are probably Marshall Farms. All my ferrets are Marshall Farms. That's just the reality of it. Does that mean that when you go to the shelter to get Marshall ferrets, you're supporting the animal mill? No, you're not supporting the animal mill. If you go to the pet store and then pay for a ferret, the money goes to Petco that they will use to get more ferrets, then yes, you are directly funding animal mills in that way. You're not doing that with the shelter. The adoption fee that you may spend to get your ferrets will directly go to helping the shelter, helping other animals in need. So again, I'm saying that buying pet store ferrets is wrong. I'm not saying that owning Marshall ferrets is wrong. I don't know why people have that idea, but I'm sorry if that it came across that way. That's not what I'm trying to say. And no, I don't hate anyone for going to the store and buying a ferret without knowing it. Most of us have been there. I've been there. I don't hate anyone for it. The important thing is now you know, and now you can share it with others. That's all that matters. Thank you guys so much for joining me here today. I hope you watched the entire video through. And if you still want to support buying ferrets in pet stores, I don't know what else to tell you. I don't know what else to prove to you to show you that it's wrong. And I'm really sorry that you still have that opinion. I hope that maybe someday in the future it will change. Do not forget to subscribe. I post ferret content weekly. At this point, it's almost daily. And also my Instagram where I post my raw pictures. I'll put an example here and cute pictures of the ferrets. I mean, what else could you need? Right, guys, I'll see you in my next video. Bye!